Hey everyone. So there was um, quite a bit of difficulty with this week's homework assignment. Um, it, a lot of the misunderstandings seem to be in the same place. Um, I got a lot of emails with the same question. Goodness, the number of emails I woke up to this morning. Um, so I wanted to do a walkthrough of the assignment solutions just so you could understand how to do this because some of these skills do build this semester. So I want you to see where where things went wrong and what the appropriate solution should have been. So I have this pulled up here, which these are really the only two things you need for this week's assignment. And then I have the actual assignment pulled up on this screen. So you're going to see me looking back and forth because I want to go through step by step here. Also, just so you know, of all the things we're doing this semester, this one did involve the most math calculations. So if you may, and I even showed you how you could do it in PSPP or Excel if you didn't want to do the math. But so if you were sitting here doing this assignment thinking you said this was not a math class, you dirty liar, screw you. I understand that. This is the most calculations that you are, are going to have to do. So bear with me here and I'll show you how to how to go about doing this. Um, so the first question dealt with what percentages of scores fall between negative two and negative one or one and two in a distribution? The reason I put this chart right here, right on the chapter homepage is because you reference this so much when you're working with C-scores. So what, what we look at is this gap right here between negative two and negative one, which is the same as this gap between one and two. So 14% of scores are always going to fall between negative two and negative one and one and two on any normal distribution when we're working with Z scores. Now let's get up to this formula. Z equals the number you're working with, the score you're working with minus the mean and all of that divided by the standard deviation. That's how you calculate a Z score. So the first question was, Suppose you have a distribution where the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 2, right? So you know your mean right here is going to be 20, and you know your standard deviation is going to be 2. What z-score would correspond with a, store, a score of 28? So you have everything you need for this. You know your score you're working with, you know your mean, and you know your standard deviation. So you would do 28 minus 20 which is eight, and you would divide that by the standard deviation, which is two. So eight divided by two is four. So that Z score would be four. Let's see, um, what's the correct formula for converting? A lot, many of you got that right. Um, okay, the one that was a little bit of a trick question, I asked you, Sam achieved the second highest score on an exam. We know that the mean score was 62. We know that there's 30 students. We also know that the highest score was a 94. What was Sam's score? That was one that was a little bit of a trick question because I did not give you enough information to calculate Sam's score. I wanted you to see the limitations of z-scores. Just because we have some numbers doesn't mean we're able to calculate anything we want to calculate. I gave you an ordinal variable, remember our language from before, so I just gave you the order of he has the second highest score. I didn't tell you how many gaps were between the scores. I didn't put this in language we can work with as a z-score. So the purpose of this question was for you to see the limitations in terms of what kinds of questions can we answer when we're dealing with z-scores means standard deviations. All right, um, you all did pretty well on the terminology type questions of sample population, all that. All right, next question. College students in general have a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of eight. So this is gonna be 60, this is going to be eight on a measure of loneliness. What percentage would have a loneliness score above a 76? So now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is find a z-score and see where that would fall percentage-wise. So if our target score is 76, we would know how many people are higher than 76. So how many people are higher than the z-score represented by 76? So how do we find the z-score represented by 76? 76 is your x, 
60 is your M. So 76 minus 60 is 16. Standard deviation is 8. What's 16 divided by 8? It's 2. So we have the first part of our problem. Okay, we know our z-score equals 2. But so now we have to come down here and look at what percentage of students would have a loneliness score that was higher than that line of 2. It's 2%. So for this, the correct answer was 2. If you got lucky and only calculated the two that's the z-score, you would have gotten it marked, right? Because this is one of the ones where it lined up that the percentage was the same as the z-score, but that does not always happen. So make sure you did that last step of looking at the chart. Um, what percentage of scores fall in each tail of a normal distribution? This right here is considered the tail, anything higher than two or lower than negative two. Two percent fall in each scale. Next question, college students in general have a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of eight on a measure of loneliness. So we're doing the same thing with our 60 and our eight. What percentage have a score below 52? So same as the last one. First, we have to find out what Z score 52 equates from. You're probably hearing my kids playing hide and seek in the background. It's a three day weekend. So we have, Okay, so 52 minus 60 is negative 8. And we know that the standard deviation was 8. So negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1. So now we have to do the second part of this to look at the curve rules and figure out what percentage of students would have a score below negative 1. So here's our line for negative 1. What percentage of students fall below this line? So it's 14 plus 2, so it's 16. 16% 16 of students would fall somewhere in this range of having a z-score less than negative 1. Um, all right. The next question was about the therapist. If I tell you that someone has a z-score of 1.6, what conclusion can you draw from that? So if their z-score is up here at 1.6, what do we know? We know that they that score is significantly higher than the mean of the clients, right? Because it's not within this first grouping right here. It's, it's, it's one step beyond. But it's also not at the very extreme of score. So it's kind of like a middle high score. All right, back to this loneliness measure of mean of 60 and standard deviation of 8. What percentage of students have a score above a 68? So this is really similar to the one we did a couple of questions ago, right? 68 minus 60 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. What percentage of students would score higher than a 1? We can't just look at the 14% because the 14% is indicating what percentage would fall between a 1 and a 2. So if we're wanting to know above 1 in general, everything above 1, we have to add the 14% and the 2%. So this answer, again, is 16. All right. Um, another question with the mean of 60, standard deviation of 8 what percentage would have a score that falls between 52 and 60? So 60 is our mean, right? So 60 is the z-score of zero. This is our middle line right here. So what percentage fall between 52 and 60? Well, we had just calculated before that 52 equals a standard deviation of negative one, right? We did that a couple questions ago because we have 52 minus 60 is negative eight, divided by eight is negative one. So what percentage of students have a score that falls between negative one and the mean, or a z-score of zero? So that's this block right here. We don't have to add anything together because I'm not asking you what percentage of students score higher than a 52. I'm asking what percentage score between 52 and the mean. So I'm asking you for that specific chunk, right? So that's this 34% right here. 
All right, and now on to the last set of questions about the uh, the marriage therapy. I gave you the husband's average scores and the wife's average scores and asked you some questions to compare them. So I told you that the wife's average anxiety scores for this type of thing are 70 with a standard deviation of 10. So M70, SD10. And this particular wife's score is a 75. So 75 minus 70 is five divided by 10 is one half or 0.5. So her Z score is 0.5. And then I asked you about the husband's Z score. And the point of this problem was to show you that this is why standard deviations are so important because he also was only a five point difference from the mean, right? Because his was, his score was 80, whereas the mean is normally 85. So we're still only at a five point difference, but having that standard deviation be five instead of 10, you're dividing by five now. So that makes his five point difference a full negative one instead of just a one half, okay? So hopefully you can see how I did that. The husband's score was 80 minus the mean husband score of 85 gives us negative five divided by standard deviation of five gives us negative one. So the husband's z-score is negative one. So if we're comparing a z-score of one half or 0.5 with a z-score of a negative one, the conclusion from that that we would draw is that the wife's score is higher than the mean, whereas the husband's score is lower than the mean. That was the only one out of that set of multiple choice statements that was correct. So that is all of the like math calculation graph type questions that were on this quiz. Hopefully that helped clear things up. If there's something that you still have questions about, please let me know and I will be happy to do a further walkthrough.